prolific author Dr. Sindiwe Magona was honored at the Amazwi South African Museum of Literature with an exhibition on her life and work titled Sindiwe Magona, A Conscious for the Nation. The commemoration will explore a carefully curated selection of her manuscripts and previous works, Dr. Magona's life experiences of poverty and uh, as an African woman who worked as a domestic worker while navigating South Africa's racially segregated spaces as a mother, wife, and community leader are highlighted in her writing. Well, she joins us now to tell us about the honor and her experiences. Uh, Dr. Magona, uh, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for, having, uh, for joining us on the show. It's an honor to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It really, it's humbling, but I, I am grateful. Ah, oh, thank you the... so much. Your work continues to be celebrated, and you yourself continue to work um, as you celebrate and mark your 80th birthday. How does it all feel? How are you taking it in? It's, um, you know, it's something that I accept. I didn't expect it to to go on and on and on. It started before the birthday and is continuing well past the birthday date. But, you know, for me, if it means the work gets recognized, the work gets to the people it's meant to get to, especially the young, but actually everybody. Mm. We all need to start being aware of who we are and the possibilities we are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as Just a, to wake up to our reality, really. As that a long-standing author, yes. pardon me, Doctor, as a long-standing author and a national treasure, I mean, it's a quite important, those issues that you raise, because the bulk of your work has been informed by your biographical experiences of impoverishment, uh, femininity, resistance to uh, subjugation, and being an African woman. How have you continued then to tell these rich, raw, and timeless stories? What's kept you off the writer's block? My sense of gratefulness. I am hugely grateful for the life I have been given. A life that still surprises me, surprises many. But the real meaning of my life to me seems to be that I am of humble origin. Mm. I am actually, you know, the role for more than 90% of people who look like me. If you were born of humble parentage, you are me. I am you. And if I live the way I live now, I'm not wealthy, but I am definitely not poor. Mm. You could also escape from poverty. If I could do it, so can you. That's the meaning of my life, really. Mm -hmm. In your book, uh, Mother to Mother, you speak about colonialism, apartheid, and the uh, systemic oppression of black South Africans. But uh, you bring to the forefront some very strong themes of family and tradition. And you made mention right at the start of, of, of our discussion, uh, speaking about uh, you know, encouraging young people more especially. And looking at today's society and all these intrinsic layers, how can we use past experiences to empower and shape society and ourselves? It goes back to what has been said eons before I came to life. You, we have to go back to the basics. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. The meaning, not the words. Mm. The meaning of who you are as a human being is recognition and acceptance of your being, embracing yourself, loving yourself, respecting yourself. If you do, you cannot but respect other human beings and respect nature. We are all one, irrespective of any perceived differences of color skin, of whether you are two-footed, four-footed, whether you grow from the ground or you come out of a womb. All nature is one. Mm. And in really getting clarity and understanding on 
the role of a mother. What characteristics stand out for you? Truthfulness, honesty about who you are, acceptance of your role. But that starts with nurturing of the young. We need to go back again to basics. Young people come into the world with no knowing, no knowledge. What do we give them? What do we know ourselves? What do we accept as truth that we can hand over to the next generation? What are the errors of our own lives that we must admit, forgive ourselves, and not pass on? Yeah, th those That's are the role of a mother. Mm -hmm. and, and that in itself is, is a huge challenge. I mean, it's, it's difficult to look within and, and be honest and find that truth so that you can pass it on and empower the, the next generation. If you don't, you know, introspect, you are not living your real life. You cannot grow without introspection. Mm. Some would go on to say daily introspection. Yeah. As a former primary school teacher, um, you know, having worked and interacted with learners in the classroom and also now, you know, writing for, for so many years, we, we keep hearing about the gaps in, in the education system. I mean, children in primary school cannot read for meaning and it's, it's a long-standing issue. It's, we're not talking just um, 10 years ago. It, it's been ongoing, and we're seeing it as children take to, to matric. Where do you think the biggest challenges are? You know, I was in Makanda in celebration of, you know, the opening of the exhibition Amazwi has kindly made for me for a year. It's open. Go, go in there now. But... Not, you know, part of the celebration, not part of the celebration, during the celebration, another aspect, separate but integrated, was the launch of the Puku, uh, you know, reading program. I don't know what it's called. Let me look quickly before okay. I mess up. Uh, launch of uh, Masifunde Songe reading program. To me, that was almost the height of the experience of being Emma Kanda over this uh, last couple of days because reading for pleasure, reading for meaning cannot be if you don't read for pleasure. Mm. You will not read if you don't love books. And therefore, Masifunde Songe is an initiative that, you know, is in my heart. I, I, I applaud Puku for starting it, Emma Kanda, but I hope Abandu Basema Kanda will embrace it and use it because that is where we start failing ourselves. Our children do not thrive. Mm. And those are the children of people who look like me who are entrenched in poverty. Yeah. A huge 90% of our children do not thrive. But because we do not understand the importance of reading. I have a book that hopefully will be coming out soon. And it's, the title is, How Do Children Get to Be Avid Readers? Mm. Yeah. It doesn't start when they are five. It doesn't start when they are one. It, it doesn't even start when they are born. It starts before they are born. Yeah, yeah. And very lastly, Dr. Magona, before we let you go, uh, Amazui South African Museum of Literature, as they celebrate your work, um, what will we find there? Sorry, just go over that again. What, what, what sort of work will we find, you know, um, as we go to this exhibition and, and really view? I was hugely and pleasantly surprised. It didn't make, make sense to me, but you know, to all writers, to student readers, you know, our teachers who must be part of this Puku project. Nothing you write is irrelevant. I went there I expecting to see rejected manuscripts, perhaps, and manuscripts of the books that have been published. 
I saw scraps I would not have collected myself. Yeah. But seeing them there, things I wrote in haste to the publisher, please publish it. When are you publishing? They suddenly make meaning. Oh, wow. Nothing you write is nonsense. Keep it, save it. It's you. It's you expressing yourself. You are important. What you write is important. Don't ever underestimate your work. Wow, what's a, what a heartwarming affirmations. Thank you so much. Uh, a national treasure, prolific writer and uh, literary icon, Dr. Cindy Magona. Thank you so much for your time.